Hello and welcome to the Recursion Cafe where we play games from the discard pile. In today's game of our match we have Sanzida on the left and Aima on the right. Sanzida is playing Son Wukong, a melee fighter with 2 movement and 17 health. He starts off solo, but at the start of each of his turns he can take a damage to summon a clone in an empty space adjacent to him, and each of these clones can use any of his cards. They can use any of his tools and tricks, but they only have 1 health each. Emma is playing Bigfoot, a melee fighter with 3 movement and 16 health, and a sidekick called the Jackalope with 6 health. At the end of his turn, if there are no opposing fighters in Bigfoot's zone specifically, he can draw a card. So fittingly, thematically, he gets advantage for hiding away and not being seen. So traditionally, Wukong is the bane of any melee fighter because unless they have movement tricks or a ranged psychic for example, then Wukong can create a wall of clones that makes it very hard for the opponent to get through and Wukong can swing in without much risk to himself. Uh, but Aima feels pretty confident in this matchup so we'll see how it goes. Here is the first skirmish, a momentous shift into a bewilderment so it's a 5 that becomes a 0 and then uh, Wukong can dance away. Wukong notably has some very strong defense and attack cards in his deck and a bunch of tricks as well, so he's a very strong fighter typically. So here is a clone and is an undefended ox form straight into Bigfoot, so <laughs> the second kind of encounter there and it's a full 7 damage to the face uh, for Bigfoot, which hurts. And if you're new to the game you might be wondering why um, Aima took that undefended, he presumably has some defenses in hand. That's because uh, Wukong has a trick card called re Bang or Trick You, and it's a zero, but if it's defended, he hits again. So that might be what, why Aima let that go through. So here we have Aima being aggressive and moving in to try to pin, or at least get some damage into the real Wukong. And it's a Savagery into a Golden Chainmail. Again, an exceptionally strong defense card. Aima doesn't win the combat, and so one damage is not dealt to Wukong. Another full defense there. It was lucky for Aima, it wasn't a higher value because then he would have taken damage instead. So Sanzida dances away with the real Wukong and swings in. Aima doesn't defend and here it is, correctly so, it is a re Bang, which means it's zero and the second half of the card does not trigger. So one hit, one miss, it kind of happens this way with, uh, with Wukong, and it usually is either an Oxform or a re Bang. At this point, Wukong is just under twice the amount of health that Bigfoot's on, uh, but he's used a couple of big defenses. Here is a log, larger than life, into Tortoise Fall. This is a good opportunity to dig damage through, so Aima boosts with a Savagery, which is 3, so that's 9 into 5. 4 damage goes through to Wukong, which is a massive win for Bigfoot. Anytime you can punch through a lot of damage in chunks to the main body is uh, fantastic. So Sanzila creates another clone and shifts the little conga line around, creating a wall around uh, Wukong to ward off any physical attacks, but of course Jackalope has tricks of his own, will run through all of the fighters and deal 2 damage to an adjacent fighter, which is the main body of Wukong. So now we're on 9 health to 9 health, and things look like they've evened out quite a lot. And here is an attack from the Jackalope, who has run through, so momentous shift is online. Could be a skirmish, could be a disengage. It's a skirmish into 72 transformations, so 2 damage goes through. That being said, Sanzida does get to recur one of the forms in her discard. I believe that's only Ox or Tortoise, and she picks the offensive option. And Aima, because he won the combat, could move, but I think decides not to. But it doesn't matter because Wukong maneuvers away. Wukong is actually not known for his card draw, whereas Bigfoot has an inbuilt engine, and in the way that Aima's playing him is like uh, Bigfoot and his Pokemon, kind of sitting in a corner, drawing cards, and letting the Jackalope kind of do all the work, and fueling the aggression with that passive card draw. So here is a regroup into a, another tortoise form, which is a solid bait. So Aima just draws a card from that, and Sanzida gets rid of one of her arguably stronger cards, stronger defense cards. There are three clones out though, so here it comes the Phoenix form. Three heal for Wukong there, and the Phoenix form is in the bin, ready to be played again with 72 transformations. This is followed by a Fiery Eyes of the Sea, which lets Sanzida look at her opponent's hand choosing one card to go to the bottom of the deck, and then they both get to draw a card. So it looks like the log, the six value log, is going to the bottom, and there's a card draw, uh, but I think there's a reconsideration, and it's the hoax instead, so the log stays. I think Sanzida is going for trying to take all of the defenses out of Aim's hand, instead of necessarily mitigating damage. Now that she's healed, and both on 9 health, she might be feeling a bit more confident on the defense. So Jackalope hits for a hoax, uh, this is undefended so the clone dies, but it, uh, the Jackalope gets to move in which is the crucial bit. So here's the second action, which means it's a strike against the real Wukong, to disengage into Golden Chainmail. So drawing out the second Golden Chainmail is great, 
It does mean no damage goes through, but it means that the jackalope can potentially dance to safety, or at least away a little bit. So there it is, and it requires an action to go get there. So it makes sense. It does mean Wukong gets to activate another clone, but I think that was pretty reasonable in case he was worried about the uh, strike back. So here's another fiery eyes at the sea. We've got a shift, a crashing through trees and a larger than life. And again, it's that, it's that decision between defense and attack. So Sinzila does take the momentous shift. Both players drawing a card after the res resolution of that scheme is important because it means that at least it's not perfect, perfect information. But when you have only three cards in hand, then yeah, it's, <laughs> it can be tough. That being said, we've seen no cancels from Bigfoot so far. And speaking of which, here is a feint into that clone by the Jackalope, which means that the Jackalope dies, it was no defense, uh, but Wukong takes the damage to bring that clone right back. So that feint ultimately did a damage only and potentially could have baited out a defense there, but since either wasn't going to take to it, especially since it was second action. Since either boosts round to flank the Jackalope and hits with an infinite strike, telegraphing it a little bit and uh, aim a defense with its gesture imagination, one of the many cancels in Bigfoot's deck. So no damage and no effect and no action gain there, which is a smart move because Jackalope could easily get killed if, he, if that uh, were not the case. So here is a maneuver away and it looks like since is now trying to be aggressive with a clone at a distance. So one clone will hit into Bigfoot, it could be a Ryu Jinga Bang, the last one, but instead it's a Infinite Strikes into a Hoax. No defense, but since it does gain an action, and uh, aim is allowed to move Bigfoot up to five spaces even through opposing fighters, so it's a good chance to get close. And it looks like since either will take the extra action to move away and engage the three-pronged defensive position, uh, meaning that Aimer has to punch through a clone at least to get through, and it's going to be tough because I think he might be running short on movement effects. So instead Bigfoot will run away and Jacklet will hit in and to disengage into a Wily Fighting. Wily Fighting will not trigger because the clone has already been defeated in the during combat phase. So it means that the Jacklet can walk in and deny since either a clone by blocking that path. So here is a maneuver and then one of the clones is gonna hit into Bigfoot. Being on those rooftops might be really good for Wukong if he can keep up that clone wall, but he might get trapped anyway if, uh, if that's not the case. So it's risky. Aima doesn't defend the Taunting Laughter, which is oftentimes a smart move. Uh, so he takes three damage, but that does mean he doesn't have to bin two cards from his hand. And he's down to six to Wukong seven. Pretty close still. So after the initial undefended Dark Swarm, Aima's pulled it back to pretty pretty even. So here is a maneuver again, sending the Jackalope in while Bigfoot retreats. And it's an attack. Undefended, it's a skirmish, which means that Jackalope can step in and again deny the clone from spawning this turn. Aim are really using those movement effects to full value there. So here is a maneuver from Sinzila trying to get some distance and hiding up in the corner. She considers blocking with the clone but instead to give him some space. But here we have a jackalope pawns right through to the main body and an attack. And it's a momentous shift into slime monkey. So that's a heavy hit. Two auto damage followed by three combat damage. Uh, although Wukong does get a free clone out of that deal. But Wukong is now on two health, which is pretty dangerous. So there are two clones now on the board and Wukong's got a fair amount of distance. A clone attacks Bigfoot, who will feint it, and it's an ox form into that feint. So that is unfortunate, that is a five damage swing, but Aima does get to boost it because that effect can't be cancelled. So he boosts it with another savagery, which is a five defense into the seven attack. And it's another Jackalot of Horns, which will finish the game out uh, for two or two damage to Wukong himself. And that is game. So well played from both players. Uh, it's, I don't think it's an easy matchup, but Aima has been practicing this match <laughs> for a long time and has been going doing the rounds and beating a whole bunch of players on our match London. According to the poll on my channel, 180 of you voted and 64% believed that Wukong would take it. And I think I would tend to agree with that as well. But again, Aima has been determined to kind of swing this match up the other way. And I think he's done just that. So congratulations. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you next time.